Hello, everyone, and welcome to TSAM Digital. I'm Ana Luisa. I'm sitting down with Phil Lynch, Senior Strategy Principal at SimCorp today. Hi, Phil. Hi, Anna. Um, today, we explore the impact of clients' en engagement needs for asset management firms and discuss the range of benefits of adopting digital interactive portals from the perspective of the end clients. Phil. Studies show that the investment management industry is lagging behind other industries when it comes to digital innovation in client communications. Why do you think this is the case and what may challenge this? So I think that's a broad generalization and there are people at different stages of that uh, development and maturity in, in, in uh, financial services and within asset management. But fundamentally, I think asset managers traditionally have a culture of risk aversion not making mistakes, never making mistakes. And I think that has hindered innovation to, 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 uh, to a large part. It's not part of the culture to take these risks and, and to, to try to lead into new things, but rather to, to follow. Um, I think that's, that's been a fundamental part of, part of the, the slow adoption. Secondly, I think that uh, uh, in general, asset management has been very focused on results and letting the results speak for themselves and, and, and that being a, a key driver for business. But now that that's being you know, harder, a harder differentiator, creating significant differentiation on, on, on performance, I think that um, service is becoming a much bigger part of their value proposition and a potentially bigger part of the differentiation. But they lack actionable feedback. They rely in general uh, on surveys, um, and they rely on anecdotal feedback from the, the people at, at, at their firm who deal with, with their, their customers, their client-facing teams, or their product managers who meet with customers. So they don't have this measurable, actionable data that is, is, uh, is very clear and, and helps them really understand what, what the clients want. Um, and then lastly, I'd say, you know, clients are not pushing back on them and saying, you know, I really don't want to have to call you to get my reports, to get my, my, my data. But really, that's the truth. Customers do not want to call anymore uh, to do things that they could just as easily do themselves and where they could respond to their stakeholders much more quickly. So that, I think those all taken together are, are the obstacles for faster adoption in, in financial services and asset management in particular. So what are the key business drivers um, and value incentives for digital portals that go beyond pure distribution of information to provide deep understanding of clients' needs and interests? Well, and I have basically a three word answer, client engagement analytics. <laughs> you know, when you're empowered with measurable insight on how your customers are engaging with your content, with their reports, um, then you can really focus in on what is important to them and what's you know, what, what they want to see. And, and then you can focus all of your attention, all of your resources on delivering, whether that's analytics or other features that, that, that uh, you think are important. You can focus in on things that you, that you can measure and see if the clients are responding in the way that you, that you expected. And, and this enables you to, to try new things and to innovate and, and, and to see if you can increase that engagement over time. Again, it's, it all comes down to the client engagement analytics and what does that mean and, and how can you leverage them? So how can digital client engagement deliver a more compelling client experience and drive client retention and upselling opportunities? Well, I, I always like to say that if you, if you don't know where you're going, all roads will take you there. And I think <laughs> creating a digital experience is, a, is very similar to that in that if you don't have the ability to measure the interaction with clients, then you could develop a lot of different capabilities, content, analytics, but, but you're not really investing them where they're gonna have a big impact. So I, I think you know, the most important thing is, is to use this, this, uh, these digital experiences to, to try new things and then figure out what's most important to my customer, what's making them engage more and do more of that and then find out where they're not engaging and spend less of your time focus on those areas um, and, and building that, that engagement model with your clients that gives them a, a really differentiated experience from your competitors. So what are the key considerations when building the business case of adopting digital portals? 
Well, I think it's a multi-step process, but first and foremost, I think you have to have a very clear idea of who you're trying to please and what you're trying to accomplish. You have to have a, ve a clear vision of what success looks like and use that as your kind of guiding principle. Second, I would say you have to make sure that you include your key stakeholders up front and make them part of the team. I think they'll surprise you at how much they can contribute, but they can also advocate and uh, not only with their peers, but other people. And typically those other groups are people like operations, client facing uh, staff, like, like sales, client management, your marketing team, and of course the product teams, they're all key, key contributors and stakeholders. Then I would say, find some clients who are willing to partner with you to develop and be early adopters of the service. Not only will they kind of help you build enthusiasm and support for the, for the, for the, for the product with your other clients, but they'll give you fundamental feedback about what's, what they're experiencing and, and, and how they, you know, what's important to them. If you can make them valuable references, then they'll help get other clients comfortable and, get, and, and help them get on the bandwagon for you. And then last, I'd say set clear and achievable milestones. Um, I think most important is you, you have to acknowledge when you're making mistakes, you have to step up and, and, and not only admit it, but you should do that soon and then review them together as a team. What are we, what is not working well? And what can we, what have we learned from it? Don't point fingers, but rather looking at it to say, what can we do better? Um, and because that's really what innovation looks like. It brings the team together. It creates a supportive and creative and construction, constructive environment. And, and I think that will make you have a successful project. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Phil.